appreciate what you're saying about burden sharing. You know what my attitude's been, and uh, we want a strong Europe. It's very important to us to have a strong Europe. And whichever way we can do it the best and most efficient would be something that we both want. President Trump showing support for a strong Europe. After a bilateral meeting with French President Emmanuel Macron, the two leaders appear to be on the same page after a bit of a, a quarrel when Macron proposed a European army to defend against Russia, China, and even the U.S. President Trump blasting that as, quote, very insulting and repeating his insistence that Europe should pay, quote, should first pay its fair share of NATO. President Macron at the bilateral agreeing that Europe needs to take on a bigger share of the military burden. But it's unfair to have the European security today being assured just by the United States and we need a much better burden sharing. That's why I do believe that we need more European capacities, more European defense in order to take this part of the burden. Joining me now is Dr. Rebecca Grant. She is a national security and military analyst and president of IRA's Independent Research. Dr. Grant, good to have you. So we can start, and I want to talk about what the President Macron just said, but let me start here. Uh, your analysis, first of all, of the notion of European countries establishing their own military, military force, and is it feasible uh, financially or physically? Well, Arthel, the idea of a European defense force is at least 40 years old. We've heard this theme from France over and over, and they've done some good things like increase their cooperation with Britain. So Macron is saying he wants to increase European capacity, but my take is he'll continue to do this within NATO. He already agreed last summer to move up to the 2%. Right. And, and, and President Macron says that it's unfair to have the European security today being assured just by the United States. Uh, but he is, he didn't add that, especially in he, this is what I read, that he said, especially in the light of President Trump's decision to pull out of a Cold War era nuclear treaty with Russia. That's what we didn't uh, see as the rest of that particular soundbite. So has President Macron's fate or faith in the United States wavered or diminished? And if so, is that justified on any level? I'd say it hasn't diminished, um, but this is a, is a classic French theme of asserting their role as a world power. Macron is concerned about the INF Treaty, which was just between uh, the United States and the Soviet Union, now Russia. And Macron is also concerned about the return of nationalism in Russia. He's concerned about Britain. But the point is, on the big international security issues, Trump and Macron agree, deter Russia hold the fort on cybersecurity, uh, tamp down the threat of terrorism. They agree there. They have some pointed disagreements on Iran and on global climate change, but they put those aside primarily to remember and commemorate the really very strong U.S.-French military alliance. So does President Trump have a point that any idea of a European military is premature and presumptuous? I mean, if, if the European countries have not paid in full, their NATO fees to support their defense and pay up immediately, not, in, not wait until the 2022 deadline as agreed on by the NATO nations. President Trump does have a point because the a European defense force on its own without NATO has never come to be. Don't forget, France actually pulled out of NATO in 1966, only came back in in 2009. But everyone wants NATO to stick together. NATO is the European and U.S. and transatlantic defense force. So this European defense force by itself never comes to fruition. But we do want to see more capacity from France and from other nations. And you mentioned, I think you just said 1966. Let's get your overview. What, uh, what do you make of the U.S. relationship with, with old Europe? Is that just a theory? Is it a new day? Oh, it's a new day, but there are some wonderful historic ties. And, you know, we really see that with France, whether it's from 1781, Battle of Yorktown, 1918, the Meuse-Argonne Offensive, or April 2018, U.S., Britain and France doing that quick, precise airstrike on Syria to deter chemical weapons use. So it really, it's a new day, but our European ties are stronger than ever, and NATO is stronger than ever, 29 members. And, and if you could, Dr. Grant, just sum up for us, in the, what's the audience takeaway as it pertains to the, the U.S. and France? 
So take away that France is asserting its leadership role, but there's a very strong military alliance and a very strong bilateral relationship here. France is an important world power, and we'll continue to hear a French take on European politics and world politics, but that doesn't get in the way of a truly strong military alliance on the issues that count, Russia, cybersecurity, and terrorism. Okay, thank you very much. We'll leave it there, Dr. Rebecca Grant. Always nice to talk to you. Thank you. Thanks, Arthel.